This video is going to show you how to calculate sampling distribution probabilities specifically for the sample mean. Before we can talk about calculating probabilities for the sample mean, we first need to discuss the law of large numbers. Let's say we sample observations at random from any population with mean mu. This population doesn't have to be normally distributed. It can follow a uniform distribution, a Poisson distribution, an exponential distribution, any population with mean mu. Once we have all of our data, we can calculate the sample mean x bar. Once we have x bar, we can apply the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers says, as the number of observations sampled increases, the sample mean x bar gets closer and closer to the true population mean mu. Now intuitively this makes sense. As you increase your sample size, you're sampling a larger part of the population. You're gathering more and more information. So as you have more and more information about the population, you would expect your sample statistic x bar to get closer to the true value of the population mean. Let's also review what the sampling distribution of the sample mean actually is. We discussed this last class, but it's going to come into play directly whenever we calculate probabilities for the sample mean. Suppose we take a sample from a population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Then here are the three results that we get. The mean of the sampling distribution, denoted mu sub x bar, is equal to the mean of the original population mu. The standard error of the sampling distribution, denoted sigma sub x bar, is equal to the standard deviation of the original population, sigma, divided by the square root of the sample size. And finally, if the original population is normally distributed, then the shape of the sampling distribution is normal. If the original population is not normally distributed, but the sample size is at least 30, then the shape of the sampling distribution is normal. This last part here was the central limit theorem. In order to calculate probabilities for an observation that came from a normal distribution before, what we would do is subtract off the population mean from that observation and divide by the population standard deviation to get a z-score. We can do a very similar thing with the sample mean. Let x be a random variable with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. We'll take a random sample of size n from the population. Then, if the sample mean is normally distributed, either because the original population was normal, or because of the central limit theorem, then x bar can be standardized by taking x bar minus mu in the numerator and dividing by the standard error, sigma over the square root of n. This value follows the standard normal distribution, so we can use the standard normal table to calculate any probabilities involving it. Let's take a look at an example of how we can calculate probabilities involving a sample mean. The average price for a gallon of gas in Pittsburgh is normally distributed with a mean of $2.02, .02, but prices vary at different locations around the area with population standard deviation 11 cents. Suppose we take a random sample of 15 gas stations. What is the probability that the sample mean price for a gallon of gas at these 15 selected locations is less than $2? Here's the thought process behind this problem. We're looking at a sample mean, not an individual observation. As a result, we don't yet know if the sample mean is normally distributed. We need the sampling distribution of the sample mean in order to be able to do anything further. Based on the properties we discussed earlier, we know that the mean of the distribution of x bar is the same as the mean of the original population, $2.02. .02. We also know that the standard error of the distribution of x bar is equal to the population standard deviation, 11 cents, divided by the square root of the sample size, 15. 0.11 divided by the square root of 15 gives us 0 0.028. The most important part here is the shape. If the shape isn't normal, we can't actually calculate any probabilities. Luckily for us, the original population of gas prices was normally distributed, so even though our sample size is less than 30, the shape of the sample mean is also going to be normal because that original population was normal. 
now that we know we can calculate probabilities using the standard normal distribution because x bar follows a normal distribution, we can get a visual representation of the problem. This curve here is the sampling distribution of x bar. It's centered at its mean, $2.02, and its standard error is 0 0.028. The value of interest here is $2 and we want the probability that the sample mean of our 15 locations is less than $2. We're looking for the shaded area below 2 on this normal distribution with mean $2.02 and standard error 0 0.028. At this point, all that's left to do is standardize x bar and get the final probability. We want the probability that the sample mean gas price is less than $2. We can turn this into a z score by standardizing 2. This gives us the probability that z is less than 2 minus 2.02, .02, the population mean, divided by the standard error, 0.11 over the square root of 15. Simplifying this gives us the probability that z is less than negative 0.7. Using the standard normal table, the area to the left of negative 0.7 is equal to 0 0.2420. This tells us that the probability that the sample mean gas price of the 15 selected locations is less than $2 is equal to 0 0.2420.